The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to the disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It all started with a problem of widows and food distribution. After Pentecost, the newly born church shared everything in common. Food, money, possessions, all belonged to all. But there were two groups of Jewish Christians, one that spoke Aramaic and those that spoke Greek. In Acts 6, Luke calls them the Hellenists and the Hebrews. And the Hellenists said that the Greek widows were being neglected when the food was shared. The church lifted up seven leaders to help with this. Philip, whom we met today, Stephen, and then five others that we don't know as well. Philip's first job as a Christian leader was to make sure everybody was fed, regardless of their ethnicity. You see, as we heard a couple weeks ago, these early believers had learned that love isn't love if it's just a theory. They had seen God's love embodied in Jesus. They had fully seen its revelation at the cross. They had seen this love now living in the risen Christ himself and in the spirit-filled new church. But you can't preach love and have people not getting enough food. Love isn't love, they knew if it's just a theory. They knew that love only became love when it was embodied. And this mutual love shaped the life of this early church along with their willingness 
to love even those outside of the circle of believers. They embodied Jesus' command. First John today is crystal clear about this. We love because God first loved us. And you can't claim to love a God you haven't seen if you don't love a sister and brother whom you have seen, the elder says. Love isn't love unless it's a theory. Love isn't love. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> love isn't love if it's just a theory. So Philip and Stephen and the other new deacons, they were just the church concretely acting out Christ's love, making it real. And Stephen did more than take care of food. He became an evangelist and a preacher. And after he was martyred, Philip went out and did the same. But he didn't go out alone either. Filled with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Philip was joined to the life of God. He became a part of the Christ vine that Jesus is talking about. He was commanded to love, yes, but he was empowered in that love by staying connected to his Christ. The sap of the eternal love of God flowed into him through the Holy Spirit. And Philip listened and followed, and he loved. The story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch begins and ends with the Holy Spirit. Philip is out telling the good news. And an angel of God tells him to go to a certain place on a common highway. When he gets there, the Spirit sends him to a man in a chariot who is reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. And Philip went. That's the wonder. The Spirit said, go and talk to him. And Philip went. He spent hours in that chariot talking with this man about Jesus and about the scriptures and helping him hear the good news. He started with Isaiah, where the man had been reading. But pretty quickly, or at least as quickly as we know, he already knows about baptism, and he wants to know about it for himself. Philip covered a lot of ground that day, literally and figuratively. And then the Holy Spirit gave Philip a great gift of love and welcome. The answer to this Ethiopian official's very hard question. He had asked, what is to prevent me from being baptized? And Philip answered him with love, offered baptism, and changed this man's life forever. But apart from Christ's love, Philip would have had a very different answer. Because the answer for this man had always been, everything will prevent you. As a eunuch, Jewish law forbade him from fully participating in the Jewish community, from even being a Jew. Deuteronomy was clear. And this matters because this man is clearly a God-fearer, someone who is drawn to Jewish teaching, to the God whom the Jews proclaim. There was a strong and large Jewish community in Ethiopia. He likely learned to love God there. But he was found on a Palestinian road because this official traveled all the way to Jerusalem to worship. He came all that way to worship even though his sexual status prevented him from full participation. This was an intelligent man, worthy of great honor. He was in charge of the whole treasury of a major African nation and its queen. But because of who he was, he couldn't become fully a part of this faith community that drew him so deeply. Imagine his courage then to ask Philip if he might also be excluded from Christ's community. And why this all matters is this is the love the Spirit wants to grow in us, a love that is real, not a theory. This 
is what the Spirit intends to make of us. People whose love is vital and real and makes a difference in the lives of people. What's remarkable about Philip is that he was Jewish. He knew the law. He knew the people who were castrated were not acceptable, but he didn't hesitate. He listened when the Spirit said, go to that one. He sat with the man and spent hours listening and talking to him, gave him the gift of listening and teaching. Philip witnessed to the embodied suffering servant love of God that Isaiah spoke of. And he told this man enough about God's love in Christ that this Ethiopian threw all caution to the wind and asked if baptism might be something he could have. You can't claim to love a God you haven't seen if you don't love a sister or brother you have seen. This should be carved over every church office and at the entrance or the exit to every Christian worship space. This is the love Philip embodied. A love that ignores inconvenience in order to be present. A love that overcomes innate prejudice and fear. A love that teaches and shapes a heart to love and see other people as God loves and sees them. And Jesus gives us tremendous news today how we can also love this way. Because these repeated commandments to love that Jesus gives can overwhelm our lives. Love your enemy. Pray for them. Give to whoever asks. Turn the other cheek. Be a peacemaker. Welcome all who stray. Be willing to lose everything in order to love. These are daunting. We're well aware of the command. We deeply care about trying to obey it, but how are we ever going to love as God loves? Stay connected to me, Jesus says. I'm the vine, you're the branches, you're part of me. My love will flow in you like sap, and you will, you will bear fruit. Abide in my word, Jesus says. Live with the scriptures. Stay engaged to them and I will guide you. Take and eat. Take and drink. And I will fill you with my life and love. Be a servant community to each other. And I will surround you with people who will literally embrace you with my love. And watch for this. I will send you the Holy Spirit. Apart from me, you can do nothing, Christ says. But connected to me, there is no limit to the love you will bear. As we grow in faith and in connection to Christ, the true vine, we are transformed into God's embodied love. You need to be ready for that. You need to be ready for Christ to change your mind or tell you you're on the wrong path ready to have your prejudice or your certainty of ideas broken apart, ready to hear the Spirit nudge you to love, ready when the Spirit says, that's the one I need you to meet. Go. Or this is the situation you can make a difference in. Go. And the joy of remaining connected to the vine is that you are permanently connected to the life and love of God that heals and loves the universe. The Spirit will help you to do whatever is needed. But this is a path of joy and delight. Come, Spirit, join us to the vine. Fill us with the sap of God's love. Nourish our lives to embody this love always. In the name of Jesus, amen.